So one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time besides when DJI trying to drop that Pocket 3 is what camera should I get? But before we go buying anything, there are some questions that we need to ask ourselves. What are you trying to do? Can you get away with just using your cell phone? Is stabilization important to you? Do you need good autofocus? Can you process the footage coming out of the camera? Does size matter? Does it? And just a bunch more with the last question being the most important one, which is what is your budget? And now, after asking yourself all these questions, you can see that the answer may not be that simple. But Pippin, don't worry about that because your voice guy money got you. We are going through each of these questions to help you figure out what camera that you should buy. And now before we go ahead and plug away these questions, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's coffee spot. Thank you so much. And if you wanna buy me a coffee, don't be shy. The link is down below. But if not, no tea, no shade, cause I ain't a hater and my hood never let me be a hater. But for real though, thank you so much for the call. So now back to the first question, which is can your phone do the job? Because Pippin, most likely, if you're watching this video, you probably have a phone in your pocket that has a decent camera. What's cool about the cell phone cameras is that you just pull it out, press record, and the image looks decent. There's really no real settings or anything you really have to set up. Like if I'm being real, if I'm if I'm just being real. But on the flip side of that though, you go out and get yourself some new drip like the Canon R5C or the Sony a7S III or even the Sony ZV-1, you press record and most likely you're gonna be slapped in the face with a huge problem, which is why does my footage look like this? Why it's so dark? Why is it too bright? Why my skin's looking all red, yo? Hey, look, I ain't even exaggerating. This is real talk. Most likely that's gonna happen. Like I would say like 90% of the time that will happen, especially if you don't know how to use a camera. But you pull out that cell phone and if the lighting's okay, you, you're, you're pretty good. So first things first, ask yourself that question. Can my cell phone do the job? Oh man, quick side note, not for nothing. I thought it was gonna be super windy out. I brought my DJI mic and not no wind in sight. Like I can't, listen, nothing. <laughs> the next question is, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to go a more professional route? Are you trying to start a YouTube channel? If so, what YouTube channel? Is it gonna be a sit down, like educational video, or like, is it gonna be out and about like this, like a vlog? Are you shooting review videos? Will you be moving around a lot? Are you gonna be around a lot of water? Are you gonna be shooting vertical video? Pimpin', all these things matter, like, for real. So you have to figure out what it is that you're trying to do before you cop anything. You gotta figure that out. For example is, I have a travel channel, and for that channel, this, this setup right here would be complete overkill. But something like the DJI Pocket 1, Pocket 2, Pocket 3 if they come, a GoPro, the DJI Action 2, stuff like that would be perfect for the travel channel. So you gotta figure out what it is that you're trying to do. And once you figure that out, Pimpin', then you can move on to actually looking at gear. If you're gonna be out and about doing vlogging and you have like anxiety, a GoPro or the DJI Pocket 1 or Pocket 2 might be perfect for you. As well as like the Action 2, like the Action 2 is boss. And now if you're gonna be doing like a tech review channel, then you might wanna up the sauce. Cause if I'm being honest, I have noticed that a lot of tech review channels have better quality video. And I'm mainly talking about like image quality. Image quality kinda matters on like a tech review video. Even with a tech review channel, you don't necessarily have to start off like swinging a hard bat. All I'm saying is that start off with your cell phone, but maybe not consider even getting a GoPro for your main shooter, but something a little bit more professional like the Sony a7S III. So my ninja, now you are good. You know what you wanna do. You wanna start a tech review channel. You see that one of the best cameras out there is the Sony a7S III. Real tall. Not to mention that you've already been using your cell phone, so you're ready to take it to the next. You take it to the next air day. You are ready for some new tech drip and you're ready to bring the sauce. You already start using that Sony a7S III 4K 120 Boss CEO status. Well, the next step is to actually see if you can edit the footage. And now this step can be tricky considering that you're gonna have to do some research. But I can tell you right now, if you don't have a laptop that's like minimum three years old, meaning that it came out within the last three years or newer, you can kiss 4K 60, 4K 120, you kiss all of that goodbye because you're gonna be shooting in 1080p. And that's even if you're using like a GoPro, the new GoPro Hero 10 and Hero 11 shoot at 5K, you cannot edit that footage on an older machine. So you have to make sure that you can at least edit the footage or it is pointless, especially with a bigger camera, one of the new GoPros, or even the Insta360, even the Insta360 cameras. You wanna be able to take that memory card out, plug into your computer, 
and just go. So personally, what I do is I just do some research. And I'm looking at a ton of reviews, not necessarily from the bigger YouTubers, but from like smaller creators. Smaller creators who actually will tell you their experiences and the problems that they're facing. Somebody who bought it with their own money. I figured out that that is the best way to figure out if you can actually edit the footage. Like, is the footage usable? Or as soon as you put that memory card in, is the computer just gonna explode? <laughs> The next thing you want to figure out is if stabilization is important to you. If it is because you know that you're going to be running and gunning, hugging the block, probably like physically running, sometimes hopping on your bike because you a boss. Then the GoPros, the DJI actions, even the DJI pocket cameras, they all might be extremely good cameras for you. Bigger cameras like the Sony a7S III, the Canon R5C, and even the new Panasonic S5 Two? All of these bigger professional cameras are not made for stabilization. They have stabilization in them, but they're not really like, they're not made for just grabbing and running. So if you are looking for like amazing stabilization out of a Sony a7S III, you ain't gonna get it. You are better off just getting some kind of action camera or a DJI pocket camera. So when it comes to stabilization, I'm gonna go ahead and just lay it all out for you. Action cameras have the best. The pocket size gimbal cameras are like the next best. Then you have your mirrorless cameras just because they do offer stabilization. And you also wanna go ahead and throw in the mix of your cell Phone. That, my ninjas, is the order of operations. But then on the flip side of that though, what about dynamic range and autofocus? If you are looking for something with autofocus as well as dynamic range, you probably won't find it in an action camera because all action cameras are fixed focus. Meaning that right now, filming on the Canon R5C, right now it is focusing on my eye. It's doing an autofocus no matter where I move, I am in focus. And then the background, is out of focus. But when it comes to action cameras, action cameras, you will just see everything constantly in focus with a little bit of dynamic range way, like way in the back. When it comes to dynamic range and autofocus, you have your smartphones and mirrorless cameras up here, and then your action cameras down here. And I think, but don't get me wrong, you can achieve sort of a fixed focus kind of look out of a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or smartphone. But if you are looking to just have yourself in focus and a blurry background, you cannot achieve that look with an action cam. And then on the pocket cameras, you can achieve this look, but it's not as, it's, it doesn't, the, the quality is much better on a bigger camera. So now that you know all this and you just want to have the best autofocus possible on a camera, I would have to say it is Sony, Panasonic, and then Canon. Then you have your pocket cameras as well as your smartphone. If you just need the best cameras with the best autofocus, you might want to look at a Sony. Like, I'm, I'm just saying. Ugh. All right, and now your next question is, are you recording long clips? Like, will the camera be sitting down recording for a long period of time? And now, if this is the case, you gotta be a little careful because, again, you had cameras that overheat after just sitting here recording for a long period of time, like the GoPros, the DJI Action 2, as well as the Canon R5 and some of the Insta360 cameras. But the good thing about an action camera is that the moment you just start moving, you are set. Like, I have never had any overheating issues with an, in any of my action cameras. Another camera that just never overheated was the pocket camera, as well as the Sony a7S III and Canon R5C. And I've also heard that the new Panasonic camera doesn't overheat either, as well as like, I, I'm trying to think if I, I don't think I've ever had any problems with the Sony ZV-1 as well. Like, yeah, no overheating issues. But if you are gonna be recording for a long period of time, you do wanna maybe keep that in the back of your mind. Overheating can be an issue with some of these cameras as well as the record limit on some of these cameras because some cameras do have record limits. For example, the Sony a7S III does not have a record limit, but the Canon R5 had, I believe, a 25 minute record limit. And then all of the X cameras as well as the pocket cameras do not have record limits but they do split up the clips after a certain amount of time. And that can be a turnoff for a lot of people. And then when it comes to your cell phone, it kind of lies somewhere in the middle because it depends on the space and the quality that you're recording in. And now let's talk about size. Does it matter? And like a lot of the questions, this is very personal. It's very, it's up to you. I cannot tell you what size camera you would want to get. For me, I do like to have the smallest footprint as possible. No cables, I don't like cables, I don't like those big old fluffy shotgun mics. I don't like none of that. Even though your Boy Scout money is a boss, I, I don't wanna lug that stuff around, but that's just me. If you are looking for a small footprint, then your cell phone is great, the GoPros are great, the DJI actions are great, and the pockets are great. When it comes to a good point and shoot, the Sony ZV-1 is really good. So if size and weight are a factor, if you want something small, go for more of the lines of a GoPro or the Action 2. But if it's not a big deal and you're just looking for the sauce, then go with a mirrorless camera like the Sony a7S III, or the Sony ZV-1, or the Canon M50, or any of those newer, like, smaller Canon cameras are actually pretty good too as well. And then something else to consider that I don't think I mentioned before, but are you gonna be shooting vertical? That is something else to consider like, 
heavily nowadays. If you are gonna be shooting vertical, there's two really good cameras for vertical shooting with holding the camera horizontal because a lot of times you don't wanna, you don't wanna turn the camera. You, you know what I mean? As of today, the two best cameras for shooting vertical footage has to be the new Panasonic S5 Mark II as well as the GoPro Hero 11. The new Panasonic is actually offering a, oh, I believe it's called Open Gate, where you can shoot a square versus shooting 16 by nine. And the GoPro is actually doing the same. They're offering more of a square sensor so that you can shoot in horizontal or vertical. Versus like the Sony a7S III where you can pretty much only shoot 16 by nine unless you turn the camera, but you physically turn it vertical. And now there is nothing wrong with physically turning the camera vertical so you can get vertical footage. But if it is like a wide lens, that's where the problem comes in because now you're warping the, the bottom and the top. And when you do this, it is extremely noticeable when you're looking at vertical footage shot, physically vertical. <laughs> <laughs> and now quick side note, all action cameras though also offer a four by three aspect ratio, which means you could just literally shoot everything in four by three and then crop it in later. But I will say that GoPro and Panasonic have a leg up when it comes to vertical footage. Now to get into the biggest thing, the meat of it all, call me Big Meech, Machiavelli, all eyes on me, Michael Jackson moonwalking it, man in the mirror. I don't even know where I was going with that. But anyway, let's talk about budget. We are crooked. But anyway, Pippin, back to budget. And I'm gonna split this off into different sections, starting with the $500 range. So from the zero to $500, you can get almost any action camera. That's your GoPros, the DJI Actions, and even the DJI Pocket Cam. For the most part, if your budget is like $500, you are set. You could probably get an action camera, a memory card, and maybe even something like even a mount. And now if your budget is a bit higher from like 500 to like a thousand, you can get yourself a Canon R50, a Canon M50 Mark II, the Sony ZV-1, brand new, the Sony ZV-E10. And I'm gonna even go ahead and say that you could cop an entry level camera used for around the same price. But something to note, when you go into this territory of the prices of like the 500 plus range to like something that's professional, but not really professional, you are entering like, you are entering and like, an investment territory. And the only reason for that is most likely if you buy one of these cameras, you're gonna have to buy lenses. You're also gonna need to buy extra batteries. You're also gonna need to buy mic. And now batteries and mics aren't too bad. It's the lenses that cost a lot. So keep that in mind when you are trying to buy something just a little bit more professional, even an entry level camera. And I'm moving into the $1,000 to $2,000 range. And Pimpin, you can cop something like the Canon R8, a Sony a7C, and just a bunch more. But remember Pimpin that you gotta buy some lenses. And lenses are not cheap. I just wanna make that clear. Lenses are not cheap. And then from there, we have everything from like the 2000 range to like the $8,000 range. And these are more of the professional cameras. And yeah, it might be a lot, but something to also note is that these cameras will last forever. And the value on them will not like significantly drop. And it also goes with like the lenses as well. They're not like when you go and you go to trade in a game at GameStop and you bought the game for like $50, but then you go and trade it in and they offering you like five. With cameras and lenses, it's not really like that, especially with the lenses. Woo -hoo -hoo, it is sunny. <laughs> so Pimpin, really take all these things in consideration, especially the budget. Like think about what you are trying to do and everything else and then throw in that budget. And that is how you can find the perfect camera for you. <laughs> Uh, well, Pimpin, that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, and subscribe. Huge shout out to everybody who bought me a coffee. And if you want to buy me a coffee, don't be shy. That link is down below. If not, no tea, no shade, because I ain't a hater. And you know my hood never let me be a hater. You know, it's thugs all up in here. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. And Pimpin, down below, let me know what it is that you are trying to do. And I can recommend a camera for you. And hopefully, like, save you guys some monies. No, seriously, though. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, Pimpin', don't gear chase. Don't be a gear chaser. Just remember that you are the drip. Be the drip. And try to go for something that you need versus just gear chasing. But again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>